man up, it's game time, everybody stand up From my town to yours, we ready for sure From the field to the court, yeah, we ready for war This is 845, Boston, man up, it's game time, everybody stand up From my town to yours, we ready for sure From the field to the court, yeah, we ready for war I said it's game time, so it's time to score Hello everyone, this is Justin Rodriguez checking in with the Varsity 845 football show. It doesn't get any better than this, the Section 9 football season is underway. As always, J-Rod has a great show lined up for the V845 faithful. I also stopped by Washingtonville to talk to the Wizards still recovering from the effects of Tropical Storm Irene. I will also offer predictions for some of the hottest games this week. Let's start the big show with highlights and interviews from last week's big games. Where do we begin? With the performance of the weekend. Monroe Woodbury quarterback Ryan Spellman rushed for 415 yards and six touchdowns in a 61-28 win over Warwick last Saturday at Middletown's Fowler Field. His rushing total ranks third in Section 9 history behind Millbrook's Nick Finger, who put up 485 yards against Tri-Valley in 2008. Ten years earlier, Fred Ruliano of Delaware Valley put up 448 yards against Livingston Manor. Spellman scored on runs of 13, 22, 41, 60, 67, and 81 yards. After the game, Spellman, the gentleman that he is, talked more about the team than himself. It's really good. I mean, you can't do it without those five guys up front. We had a guy step in today. Uh, Nick Marino did really well for Andrew JJ, cop, but uh, I mean, it's a team thing too. I mean, I'm actually really impressed how Tony came out today and he had those two big plays for us. Uh, it's a team performance too, and I, and I also credit the defense for adjusting and making plays to stop or works offense today. The Crusaders, who have won 60 straight games against Section 9 opponents, actually trailed Warwick 14-7. But Monroe Woodbury's defense made some adjustments and Spellman went off. Monroe Woodbury coach Pat DeLiso talked about the Crusaders' effort. We played in spurts here and there uh, as a team. I mean, we came out, uh, we struggled offensively. Uh, I thought Ryan was hurt seriously. Uh, he made some mistakes even. At that point, the defense played great. Special teams put them in bad situations and so did the offense. But Ryan didn't quit, the offense didn't quit, and we came out and we got into gear in the second quarter and he just kept us rolling. We put 62 points up. I think he had about 400 yards with himself. Earlier on Saturday at Fowler, Burke Catholic beat Goshen 32-6 in a crosstown rivalry game. Christian Ward rushed for 101 yards and two touchdowns, and Matt Sino added 91 yards and two touchdowns out of the backfield. Sino talked about his big game. Oh, I felt great, you know. There was there's some questions about you know about who's gonna about playing like injuries and stuff, but uh, we all came out and we played and we worked our asses off, and, and we all we all scored. Like we, we all we all helped out the team a lot on offense, so it felt great for me. I have to tell you, I love the atmosphere at Fowler for both games, especially Goshen vs. Burke Catholic. The crowd was into the game and lively. This should be a game played every year. Burke Catholic's Jake Morgenstein talked about what the rivalry means to him. It's great. Well, I couldn't have done it without the offensive line. They helped me a lot, and we just came out here and beat them. We wrap up our highlights with Menacing Valley's 37-0 win over rival Port Jervis. First-year quarterback Ryan Callahan hit Jeff Newland for two touchdowns passes to help break it open. Meanwhile, the Warriors' defense was rock solid. Defensive back Anthony Laurel put an exclamation point on the game with an interception return for a touchdown. Forcing five turnovers in the, in the win. It was an impressive victory by the Ville. It becomes even more impressive when you consider the Wizards didn't have a field to practice on all week. Tropical Storm Irene hit the village hard and left Washingtonsville's field under several feet of water. More rain came and look at the practice field this week. It still looks like a lake. Washingtonville coach Don Clark and running back Mike Flower talked about the trying times in Washingtonville. These, uh, you know, these guys get along very, very well together. They look out for each other. And you know, it's kind of brought us a little closer with a little bit of adversity, and you know, I think that'll help us down the line. You know, from day to day, we really have no idea where we're going to be, where we're practicing. 
You know, like today, I thought we'd be back in our practice field, but again, it's underwater again, so we're here. So. The Upstart Wizards practice at nearby Lasser Park this week to prepare for Friday's showdown with Newburgh Free Academy. It sure beats the alternative, practicing in gyms and small patches of grass outside the high school. You can read more about Washingtonville's gutsy effort in the face of adversity in Friday's edition of Time, the Times Held Record and Varsity 845 online. Now for the moment I haven't been waiting for, my games of the week. Why am I so hesitant? My picks tanked last week. I was 13 and eight. I'm lucky I still have a job. Meanwhile, the readers smoked J-Rod going 19 and two. That's impressive. Great job, readers. I will redeem myself. That's a promise. As for the games of the week, I have two. Newburgh at Washingtonville and Kingston at Warwick. Here goes. I like NFA coming off an impressive 21-0 win over Binghamton last week over Washingtonville. On a wet field, I think NFA's ground and pound offense might be the difference. Washingtonville likes to throw a little more. It was hard to go against the Ville, let me be honest, but I'm gonna go NFA 24, Washingtonville 20 in a great game. And take Warwick over Kingston. I think like Cornwall last week, Warwick will have too much offense for Kingston. Kingston lost to Cornwall 31-6. Of course, Spellman was the man against Warwick last week, but I really liked how Warwick quarterback John Garcia has developed. Warwick's offense is dynamic and fun to watch, so I'm going to take Warwick, 28-19. Well, that's it for this week's show. It was my pleasure. Check back every week for the Varsity 845 football show. I'm J-Rod, signing off for Varsity 845. This is 845, Varsity man up. It's game time, everybody stand up. From my town to yours, we ready for sure. From the field to the court, yeah, we ready for sure. This is 845, Varsity man up. It's game time, everybody stand up. From my town to yours, we ready for sure. From the field to the court, yeah, we ready for war. I said it's game time, so it's time to score. If you're not playing to win, then what you